Hello and welcome back to Dev with Sev. I'm Sev the Dev and today we are going to be creating power-ups for our player. Power-ups are objects in the world that the player can pick up and obtain. They typically grant the player a special ability or enhance their attributes in some way. In this video, we are going to create some basic power-ups that modify our player's core attributes. Before we begin, I'd like to apologize for my extended absence from these videos. I got really sick over this past holiday and I was unable to record during this time. With that said, I'm ready to continue this series, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is make a new C-sharp script in our source folder and name it PowerUp. We also want an object to apply the script to, so let's go ahead and go to our hierarchy, right-click, 2D Object Sprite, and also name this PowerUp. The sprite we're going to use for our PowerUp is from the tile set we sliced earlier. I'm going to go down and use tile set 84, which is this red gem here, and drag that into our sprite renderer. Now we can see we have a gem in the scene. We also need to add a box collider 2D component to our power up here. And let's edit our collider so we make sure it's around the bounds of our object here. Now let's attach our PowerUp script to this PowerUp object and open it up in the editor. One thing to note is I did update my Visual Studio from 2017 to 2019. This isn't a big deal, this just means that some of my keywords are going to be colored differently, so just keep that in mind. Before we start on the script, we actually have to go back into the editor and fix a couple of things. On our player, we want to switch the tag from untagged to player. We are using a tag here because we want to verify in our power-up that it should only activate if the player has entered its collider and not just any character. And in our power-up, we want to make sure isTrigger is checked on our box collider 2D. This is because we don't need to register a collision with a rigid body. Instead, we just want to send an event whenever a rigid body enters or exits the volume. And then we can go back into the editor. Now in our script, we can get rid of start and update because we are going to use the void on trigger enter 2D function. And we're going to pass it a collider 2D called collision. Now we want to check if our collision has a tag, so we'll use compare tag player. And if that's true, we want to activate. Now our activate method is going to be a public virtual void function called activate. And in here, all we're going to do is destroy the game object. We want this function to be virtual because we are going to be creating child power-ups with more specific functionality than just destroying. This virtual allows us to override this method in our children. There are more advanced ways to handle power-ups in systems that require creating objects that share base functionality. You can use things like scriptable objects to store data related to our power-ups and then just instantiate a power-up object from that data. This makes it so we don't have to have these game objects in our scene and we can reference shared data instead of copying it each time we make a power-up. Scriptable objects are outside of the scope of this series, so we are going to stick with the child scripts. If you would like me to make a tutorial video about scriptable objects detailing what I've described, then let me know in the comments. For now, we can save and go back into our editor and press play. Now if we run into our power-up, we should see that it gets destroyed. Now we need a private player reference. And this is so we can apply effects to our player. And we'll also need an accessor. And we're just going to put the get here. Now 
Now we can check in our compare tag here if the collision has get component player. We want to set our player to that component. Over in the character script, we have to correct a mistake I made earlier. And we're going to re be removing the protected keyword here from current health because we want other classes to be able to modify the character's health. Let's go back into the editor and make a subfolder in source. And we'll name it powerups. and move our PowerUp script there. And back in Visual Studio, we can reload all and reopen our PowerUp script. Now we want to make another script in the PowerUps folder and name it PowerUp underscore heal. Now let's reload Visual Studio again and open up that script. Let's change our inheritance from mono behavior to power up. And we don't need start or update. And we really only need one attribute, and that's going to be a public float amount for the amount we're going to heal by. We'll set that to 5 by default. And let's give it a header of settings. Now let's implement activate below it. We'll say public override void activate. And we'll leave base.activate in there because we do want to destroy the object. And we're going to reference our player, get their current health, and then add our amount to it. For now, we can put in a debug here so we can log it out. And we'll give it our player's current health. Back in the editor, let's click on our power up. And we can remove this script and replace it with the power up heal script we made. We leave amount at 5. And let's rename it to power up heal. Now, if we click play and run into that power up, it should still get destroyed and we'll see a log that our health has been increased by five. Now let's make sure the position is zeroed out and we can drag that into our prefabs folder now. In fact, let's make a new folder in prefabs and name that powerups. And drag that power up there. Now we have a power up heal prefab we can drag into our scene whenever we need one. Looking at our character and player scripts, we will notice that they are getting a little bloated. As we create more power-ups, we will need to reference their properties more often. This creates a tight coupling between the two classes, so after we get our power-up functionality working, we are going to separate our character attributes into their own character attributes script. Separating these members into their own script will help keep our code organized. That's all we're going to cover in this video. In the next part, we will create a few more power-ups and make our character attribute script. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like or subscribing to my channel for more content. Let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions for this series, or if you want to see any of the concepts I go over during these videos in more depth. Thank you so much for watching, this is Sev the Dev, and I will see you all in the next one.